Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm in this uh, local forest right now uh, searching for uh, a good stick. Uh, I'll show you why very soon. Here I got my digging stick. Well, it's just a stick. It's pretty thick though. And it has this part. And this part is very good to have on digging stick when you're digging for uh, deeper roots as roots for survival food. When you're digging for spruce roots you don't need much, you can even use your hands. But when you're digging for plants to eat, this is the way to do it. Okay. You can put it in the ground like this, use my foot to force it down. Behind me here you can see a lot of plants. These are called fireweed in the US, uh, Rose Bay Willow Herb, I think is the correct English name for it. In Norway we call it Geitroms. In the summer it has these purple flowers all over the place, this whole stem. And when the flowers go away it ends up with these capsules and after a while they crack open like this one and inside you have this fluffy stuff and in a few weeks now this whole thing will be completely white out of this fluff and it's very useful for fire making this is a fully edible survival plant and it's uh, at least here in Norway it's very hard to to mistake this from another plant so it's a kind of pretty safe plant you can eat the flowers, you can eat the, what do you call them, uh, buns before you get flowers in the spring. But most of all, it has a quite a big root. And that root is very good early in the spring before flowering and right before winter. When the plant has died down and all the nutrition has gone back in the ground, that's when uh, this is a very good survival plant. A lot of carbohydrates in the roots. And as I said, for fire making, it's useful for at this time of year. And it's also, as you can see, <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's also the stem is very fibrous. Almost like the um, stinging nettle. So you can use these fibers to make uh, cordage. And especially here in the, nor in, the, in the northern part where we have snow in the winter, and we often find these stems sticking up from the snow. And even then, they are brown and dry, but you can crack them and take lo loose some fibers. Moisture them a bit in some snow or water, and uh, you can actually make string in the winter. So, very useful plant. We could have dig up a root from that now. I tried to dig up a few roots uh, just uh, a minute ago, but uh, they're all really dry and not good for anything. So, so I will uh, later this uh, autumn. I will. Uh, Find this plant again, identify it as it's dead, so it's much easier to see when it's ready for uh, use. And we'll uh, dig up some roots and try to make something out of it. Okay. Along trails like this, there's a lot of plants that are edible and easy to find. Here we have some of them. They are called broadleaf plantains. I think. These are pretty small but there are some big ones on the run. These leaves are very fibrous. If you try to break it up you will see it has a lot of these threads. So it's, uh, you can see how it breaks up. And uh, you can even see the threads here. So it's, it's not very easy to digest as is. So you should try to find 
in the center you find these. These are stem with some seeds on. <coughs> there is the same, a fully grown one. Both of these are edible as is. And these stems or these seeds actually contains a lot of fat also. So it's a very good survival plant. It doesn't taste much, but it is what it is. This tastes better because it's fresh. And even now, late August, they're still growing, still new plants coming up. And if you look down here, you can find this smaller leaves. And these smaller leaves, they, you can just eat as is. Because the fibers are so small, so you're able to break them down. Here we have some big stalks with seeds from the broadleaf plantain. This one has better, I'll show you. This one, you see the seeds? This is actually quite a good amount of seeds which you can eat. It doesn't taste any bad. Doesn't taste any good either, but it's uh, yeah, it's okay. But we have more plants here. Here we have dandelions. Dandelions are edible as is. The flower, the stem, the leaves, the roots, everything is edible. Let's see if we can take up those roots. It's really hard ground because of this is <clears throat> this is <clears throat> on a trail. <clears throat> exactly, I broke down the roots, but when you clean it up. It's not too bad. As you can see, it's white inside, so it's just have to clean it up. And I've tried several recipes, if you can call it on that. And I don't, I don't find any way to get this uh, very tasty, good edible. They are edible, but uh, most of them taste like shit, to be honest. And yeah, we have more. This is clover. Now the flowers are kind of disappearing, but uh, still, uh, when they're flowering on top, this uh, as we eat this flower top, it's very sweet, sweet taste to it, very good. But you can also eat the rest of the plant. It's uh, fully edible. I guess most of you are able to identify this. Stinging nettles. They are also very useful survival plants. You can boil up the leaves and make a kind of soup or you can add it to other food to combine it. It's uh, pretty tasty, very good. This is an old one, but still. You find the younger ones and take the leaves from them like this one. This is a younger type and these leaves are quite good. And uh, the stem itself, as you can see here, it's a very long good stem. A lot of fibers for cordage making. So, very useful plant. Right beside the field here, you can find another plant which is useful. It looks a bit like dandies, but it's not. This is chamomile. I think this long ones is called Roman chamomile or German chamomile. And what do you use this for? They pick off the flowers. 
and bring them home, dry them up, and make some tea out of them. It's not a plant for eating, but it can be used for medicinal purposes. Like if you have trouble sleeping or trouble with your stomach, tea from this says to help. And there was one other thing I forgot to mention. Let me see here. Remember this one? Uh, what do you call it? Broadleaf uh, plantains. These are, I learned from a very young age, when I was only four or five years old, that this can be used for uh, putting on wounds to make it heal faster. I don't know if it heals faster, but still it's uh, very antiseptic. So you can use it to ground up in your hands after you've been on the toilet. Or you can mush it up and put it on a wound. I've done that yeah, since I was five, four or five years old and it works. It really does. It heals up or close up quickly and, uh, and usually doesn't get any infection or anything like that. Here we have another plant which you often find in a forest but in Norway this is not a natural plant, it's uh, not a wild growing plant, it's uh, something that uh, comes from some garden somewhere. It's called uh, red elderberry, I think in English. It's uh, in Norwegian Rød Hyll and it's actually poisonous. So it's uh, something to stay away from, even if you're really hungry and this looks like mwah, tasty, it's not good. So, even very, very far from people, from houses and stuff, you can even find this far in the, in the forest. But it's, uh, as I said, poisonous. Uh, stay away from it. So, these uh, plants I've been uh, showing you today, these are plants useful for survival. But, these are plants you usually not will find very easy uh, when it comes to wilderness survival. These plants are what I call roadside plants. That means these plants thrive in in uh, what do you call it disturbed soil. So along roadsides, building sites, old farmhouses, everything like this around these areas where people have been digging or uh, uh, the earth are used, the soil are used, this is the place where you will find these plants. But still, they are good survival plants. Survival is not only wilderness. It might be because of a disaster or anything else. Then you know you have some plants outside your door. So. From under this beautiful rowan, I thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon.